cool. Yeah. Alright, my name's Garrett. I'm Amanda. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> because they went along with Michael like murdering him and they didn't do anything about it and then Claire was not was not very innocent herself because she was the one who hid Paul's medicine so that he would be the old Paul again the one that she loved and just wanted him to be and also and then she was also not innocent because she was the one who beat up Sergei in the end so to protect her family from the truth coming out to protect her son from getting in trouble with the law like the whole, we like learn a lot about Claire in like the last 40 pages or so, and how she's actually like really twisted just as much as Paul. And even though like the author kind of like tries to like make sure like this family is like innocent, loves their game, but that it's like the vicious ones in the beginning, and then towards the end, it all changes and you know the real them. And that's kind of like why the dinner like is a great title for the book because it kind of like climaxes like towards the end, like a normal like dinner would. And how I had a quote on page 247 that says, How could we make him aware of his responsibility without at the same time dam damaging his ch uh, child's innocence? And how uh, like Claire wants to make sure Michael still stays innocent, even though maybe her definition of innocence is kind of like different from ours, because we see innocent as like being someone who's not like actually killing someone, because he's gone so uh, far like, at the end, like how he's killed two people. To at the end, and how it's gone really crazy, and how uh, he might have gone this with Paul and stuff because of his bipolarness. Yeah, and I think it definitely changes like what we think of when you think of innocence. Like, like I used to like it almost it makes you realize that just because you're a child or a young adult, it doesn't mean that you have this natural. Um, acquired innocence that we often think of in the sense, like if you think about it, Michael's like a murderer now, he's murdered multiple people, like what sets him apart from Dick and Jerry you know, like he could like he could arguably end up with, on their path I mean, he doesn't really seem it doesn't bother him because he killed Vasco, like it's not it doesn't seem like he feels like sorry shocked at the end, like, I was expecting that to be so weird and stuff, like, Paul, like, how she'd be the one who would injure Sergei, and how, how, like, happy they want to, like, seem, even though, like, they, they're finally, like, that's their happiness for them, is, like, being twisted and weird, like, but our happiness is a little more, like, towards the innocent perspective, and how if you're innocent, you're kind of happy, or, like, if you're not playing someone, you're kind of happy, but their happiness is, like, different, it's, like, a different definition of it. Yeah, no, I gotta say that the book definitely made me realize like how broad of a definition happiness can be. Mm -hmm. um, and I thought it was interesting like how much, I feel like they mentioned happiness a lot in this book. Like um, on page 201 it says, and then I thought about our happiness, about our happy family, our family that should be happy with what it had. Like there were constantly references like that, but it was kind of like, are they really happy? Like, after kind of like kind like dealing with this situation by just like causing more blood more, more. yeah um i think that one of their definitions of happiness is like being normal and on page 202 it says i clearly remember the goal i set for myself i want to keep up the appearance of normalcy and i think that their whole family like both paul and claire like all they want is to be normal and if that means, you know, like not um, confessing to like what Michael did and just trying to keep it a secret, 
Um, or even if it's not like morally the right thing to do, I think if it keeps them happy and keeps them like a normal, perfect family, that's like their only goal, really. I feel like, sorry. No. I feel like that was when like conformity kind of came into the book because they were willing to do whatever it took or to protect Michael and their image as a family and just to remain united. So I feel like Paul and Claire were willing to conform their idea of what's right and wrong just morally to protect Michael. And they said that, like, and I remember them mentioning earlier in the book that you're not guilty until you're pr proven guilty, like you're innocent until then. So they were willing to like look up, like almost turn a blind eye towards what Michael did and just try to hide it for him because they didn't want anything to come of the situation. But really, like, it's not, they were willing to change their perspective of what he did because it was their son, but really it was just, it was right regardless of who committed it. Yeah, and like, I feel like this book just talks a lot about boundaries and how like, the parents kind of have to conform to the idea of like, do we protect our daughter, like our son, or what happened, or do we like, make him like, uh, like, tell the truth about what happened because that would be better for the long run. But that's like what Claire and Sergey like, battle over, and how it's like what's better, what's best for them, what will make them most happy, and like for Michael, probably just to be followed up. For Rick, it's probably the opposite, just tell the truth because it's like eating him up inside. And th like those two different perspectives kind of like tell like the family overall. Like Rick's family has more of like a more closer to a definition of happiness as like we think, while the uh, like uh, Paul's family and Michael's family have like a more crazy definition of happiness. And how there's a quote on page two eighty eight. It says. A happy family can survive a shipwreck. I'm not trying to say that their family will be happier afterwards, but in my case, not unhappier. Like that was Paul talking about his family and how they they did survive a shipwreck in a sense, and they're still happy. So for them, I guess it went okay. Because in our perspective, it's like so like out there. Like how could you do that to your own family? I think our perspective of the Claire Paul and Michael changed completely from the beginning of the book to the end of the book because in the beginning of the dinner showed up, they looked like this innocent, like inferior family to Sergey and Babette, and then towards the end we learned that they were the more like immoral and vicious people, and, and they were the ones who were guiltier than Sergey and Babette, and Sergey and Babette, even though it looked like they cared only about their image in the beginning of the book, they were the ones, especially Sergey, who was willing to do the right thing in the end by withdrawing. Uh, oh, sorry. I just have a question for you guys, do you think that Claire, not wanting, like, it to get out was for her or for Michael because I know she's all about like being happy or but do you think that it was like selfish of her to do that or do you think she was thinking about her son more? I think that for her her son was such a big part of her life that she I don't think she could take it if something like if something were to happen to him like I think um Michael and Claire um, Claire and, uh, Paul, Paul yeah, yeah. um, genuinely really, like, love Michael and are willing to do anything for him, which is almost the problem, like, they're, like, they're not, they don't almost, they don't help, like, force him to take responsibility for his actions, and I feel like it's, it's almost, it's horrible to say, but it's, like, kind of under, it doesn't surprise me, like, what Michael did, kind of just based on, like, how his parents parent him. Like, like Paul, like, like Michael kind of sat and watched Paul like beat up all these people, like, um, on multiple occasions, like for, like a principal and then Sergey and then the other principal. So it's kind of like, oh no, no wonder Michael's doing all this stuff. Like it's kind of reasonable and like it's scary to think that they're still like by the end of the book they're still like they haven't gotten in trouble for it at all. Like they're still out living yeah. in society and like I just. I would be uncomfortable with them, like if they were my neighbors, you know, like they kind of, they're, they're scary, they're, like they're, they're scary. The scary yeah, like in the beginning of the book, I was kind of like what you said, you weren't expecting it, like I was like, oh, like he has a nice sense of humor, um, like it's a little quirky and different, but by the end, you're just like, oh my gosh, yeah, like um, it's just It's like we learned that Michael is like crazy once we know like what happened to the incident and how how like he wrote the essay on like capital punishment and how he wants to take matters in his own hands and how Paul is just like wants to protect his son because that's why like kind of he's as a principal because he like they're very defensive of Michael and like just want to make sure like whatever he's doing they're okay.
okay with it. It's like whatever you're doing is fine. Like they don't really want to parent him in a way. They just want to comfort him, protect him for like the future. I think, that's, was interesting. I think that's the scarier part is that the parents are okay with it. Yeah. Um, and you know, it's it's kind of like they want to. I don't know if it's for their image, but it's just I think it's worse that they are like that rather than Michael. I mean, in the end, they weren't willing to aid Michael in, like, killing Bo because they were the ones who called the house to bring it to look like he was really home when really they just left the message on the answering machine because they knew that he was going to go kill Bo that night. So I feel like, like, just the fact that they're okay with their son, like, they're just sitting contently at a dinner, like, relaxed with their family, just, like, when they know that their son is going out to kill somebody to cover up the murder they already committed, like, that's just... Like so twisted, the fact that they're perfectly okay with that, and they were willing to help him get away with it. And then not only that, it's the son, it's their, you know, the the fact that it's part of their family in a way. It it just like I was so surprised and like appalled that like that that they like allowed it to happen. And um, I don't know, I just can't even believe that they got away. Conscious to kind of come up, or conscious to let it go, you know. I feel like Claire was more okay with the whole thing because she was the one who said, that, and that if that didn't work, he should do whatever seemed best. I told him that I don't need to do, know what it is. Like she's okay with what Michael's doing in a way. Like accepts it. While Paul, I feel like kind of denies it in a way because, like the last couple pages, I thought uh, maybe there's a chance that Paul knew about the whole incident, just blocked it out of his memory. So maybe just kind of like denying what happened. Like maybe he's like the better person to Claire. And that's what kind of like shocked me. Like, oh, that, that's possible. Yeah, you wonder, like, at first, my, my first reaction when um, Claire uh, beat up Sergei was, oh, like, I wonder, like, Paul must have, like, impacted her and kind of brought out the worst in her, like, with all his anger and um, his constant, like, Like, but then by the end, it's kind of like, oh, maybe Claire was like that on her own, you know, and that's just why they were a good couple, like that suited each other. I think one quote that was really telling to me, um, I kind of reflected how Paul, like how twisted and messed up Paul was when, was when um, he said, of course it's terrible. We've all been taught to say that we think it's terrible, but a world without disasters and violence be it the violence of nature or that of muscle and blood would would be the truly unbearable thing. Like, like when I first read that, I was like, whoa, what, is, what does that mean, you know? like Yeah, like the fact that he's like, you just have to have, like, terror, basically. It's, it's surprising. It's definitely, like, character change from the beginning, which we did not see coming, because they were, like, portrayed as these very innocent people, but...
have control or was doing things right. And so I feel like he, I don't know, I, I just wrote down that he doesn't want to conform to other people's ideas. And he doesn't want to admit that he's wrong. Um, so I definitely think it's hard for him to like see Claire and Michael's relationship since he might try to just go along with that. I feel like he picks Claire in such a good light because like you said, um, Page 248, like I, love, I look into Claire's eyes, the eyes of the woman who represented happiness to me. So I feel like they both just see each other in such good lights and they just like would never like do anything to hurt each other. But, and they, that's why they're willing to protect Michael so much because they don't want anything to come between them. But like, I feel like you can only go so far with that. Yeah. I think as much as, um, as much as Paul preaches that he wants, that he, they want normalcy, they want to be normal, that Clarity and Babette are more the ones who conform to the image what society thinks to them, partly because he is running to be the Prime Minister, but I think that's something that's definitely important to them, where I feel like Claire and Paul are more very set in their own ways, you know, and I mean, just the fact that, like, they, the, the, these murders that they, like, are, how they reacted to them, like, it just kind of shows that they, they don't really have normalcy. Like that's just not a part of them. Though. Yeah. No matter how much they want it to be. Like, would you think like Sergey's family would be more different, like act more like Paul's family if he wasn't running for prime minister? Like he has to watch like what society thinks of him. Like would they? Would you think like they would act the same way if they were like brought up the same way as like Paul was? Because they are both brothers. So. Right. I think that Sergey just kind of part of his personality does. The, like to be like so elegant and extravagant. I think I think that he really finds satisfaction in kind of like showing up tall, like being kind of like 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 trying to like look better than him. Like I think that's just like a part of him, and he, I think he would be doing that in another in just different ways. Like if he wasn't running for prime minister, yeah, he does the right thing in a way. Like he's yeah. the one who like tries to like help his son rather than just protect him. Like, protect him also kind of helps it, but like, in a bad way, like, you protect your son from, it's kind of like, to protect your son, and it's like telling him, like, what you're doing is okay, which I think is bad, like, but for their view, it's fine, because that's what they want from their son. No, I definitely like the exchange between Claire and Paul, like, what happiness is, like, dragged on and like the whole story was basically like ended up in the last like 40 or 50 pages of the book and I just I just thought it was like almost difficult to read because either nothing was happening or so much was happening and I just disagreed with it. Yeah that's what was hard for me is that they kind of just left it with no resolution to like certain relationships between characters because obviously they're going to be affected a lot um, between like the couples and then between um, Rick and Michael like after Michael killed the cousin, so I just wish that they went into more detail about that because I feel like that plays an important part on how this affects their family. I feel like maybe, do you think there's a chance that they would just go back to normal families loving each other and like they would forgive each other? Or do you think, think there's more conflict? Ever, I don't think, I don't think they were ever though really a normal family. They like had like a fake, like, like they like yeah, said they were normal. Yeah. Yeah, I, I just don't think it'll ever. Yeah, one thing like it was like the book was very disturbing like at the end but one thing that I did like kind of like about it was it really got me thinking about like like happiness because it was mentioned so much in the book um, and it just it made me it kind of showed a different perspective and on it on like what is it to have morality and what is like can like a the family of a murderer be happy so for that reason, like I'm glad I read the book. Um, I like I liked how it was such an easy read, too. Like like you look up in 20 pages and don't lie. Like I think there's something to be said about having a book like that. Like I think that's definitely a reflection on the author, because I think that's hard to do in a sense. But, yeah, that's 
Okay, yeah, let's give a book in a sense how the capital implying back to happiness and how we easily could if we said that by like these terms of the book. But at the same time at the beginning I thought was like going like far beyond like the, what they needed because I understood that like Paul was like very like judgmental person and like pinpoint people. And like some of the flashbacks were just like also just talking about how we like we, like hurt someone and how there's just a lot of it and like how twisted it became. And Twenty-one minutes. 